David, hey, congratulations for Snag. Thank you, Gig. How are you today? I am doing great. I'm doing great. I love these type of action films. These are like, you know, those guilty pleasures that we yes. would like to see. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it, yeah, it's, it's especially, you know, as a as a film lover, you uh, notice the style of films, you know, and, and he had a really interesting, unique style in this one. So so what initially drew you to this project in the first place? The script. You know, I read the script and I'm like, this sounds like fun. <laughs> this sounds like something that could be created in a very interesting way. Um, and uh, I really like the character. I think there was there's a lot that's not said about this character that has the opportunity to show later on. Um, and also, you know, I spoke to Ben about uh, and and I noticed his enthusiasm and his understanding and his clarity of what he wanted to to show, and and that's always a good sign with a filmmaker. So, what is the backstory between Ramon and Snag? Well, I don't want to I don't want to say too much, you know, but um, I think they definitely have, you know, it, it almost feels like they've maybe saved each other's lives at one point, and then they've disagreed about things at one point. And then they've gotten involved in some dangerous, you know, shady situations that they had to like figure out between them. But I feel that there is a loyalty between the two characters that's that's really strong. There's a strong bond, you know. And so uh, I, I I like I, I, every time I take a role, if there's a camaraderie there with somebody, uh, that's interesting to me. And I, I felt that in reading the script and reading the character of Ramon. Can you talk about the scene where everyone's pointing guns to each other? It's almost like a Mexican standoff in its own way. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, like I said, you never play the comedy, right? You always play the seriousness of the situation. So the comedy or the, uh, the uh, is going to be in the script, in the writing. Uh, I remember doing that scene thinking well this is odd and if this would be in real it would be very odd you know what's going on but um i i i loved it i thought it was really uh innovative and in how he did it and uh it was a lot of fun to do comedy is all about timing um you know and and you as a veteran actor how do you develop that timing for yourself i mean because I, some for someone on reason i always picture you either you know, more like a, like a cop all the time. Right. Right. You know, it's, it's, it comes like in reading scripts, it's an experience in reading scripts. When I, I see certain, certain moments that I'm like, well, this is going to be, this is going to be funny. It's going to be real, but it's going to be funny. And I'm talking about uh, funny and that people will identify with the awkwardness of what's happening on, on screen, you know? And so I, uh, I think I think experience has something to do with it, but I really think ultimately it comes down to the writing. It comes down to understanding as an actor, understanding the situation at that moment. That way you could hit those, you know, those moments where it's funny. If you understand what's going on, then you could hit those moments. What's your definition of a gringo and does it apply to an Australian? Ah, uh, you know what? I, I never even thought about it. I, I just I don't know if he would apply to an Australian. I, I wish I knew the answer to that. I don't. Um, well, what what's your definition of a gringo then? Well, you know, I don't really have a definition of a gringo. It's a slang word, isn't it? I don't want to say something that's going to get me in trouble. So don't put me in that position. Um, I think that, you know, we all, uh, this culture has words for every ethnicity. And I think that some of those words, depending on how it's used, can be negative, could be insulting or could be just an amusing thing to say. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't really, I think everyone knows from the movies what gringo means or what, what, it depends on who's saying it to who and what they mean by it, what's behind it. What is your love for, you know, these action, this action genre? Because you've done a lot of those. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it's always the stakes, right? The stakes are always higher. You know, and I, I, you know, me personally watching a movie when the stakes are high, I'm engaged. 
I'm engaged and I'm watching and I'm trying to figure out what I would do in, as that character. And so I would say the stakes that are so high in these kind of movies. Do you watch yourself um, in your own films, especially in through these intense moments? Uh, you know, I used to, not, I, in the past, I didn't like look at, watching myself on, on screen. I just, I just didn't like the sound of my own voice, but now I watch and I just to see if I, if, if I got, if I got the moment that I wanted to express. And so I, I do watch some of it. I don't watch it all, but I do watch some of the stuff I do just to see if when I was doing it, what I was trying to do, if it actually translated onto the screen, you know, and, and uh, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You know, and and you learn from that. If if you had to choose your uh, proudest film um, that uh, that you made, what what uh, what would it be? The proudest film I made. Wow, you know, I did this really offbeat, uh, a low budget film called Shine, and it was about Puerto Rican life in East Harlem and the salsa uh, generation and and musicians and families and the closeness and gentrification of those areas. I remember doing that. I found that to be really interesting. Um, it's, it's called Shine. And it was directed by Anthony Nardellillo. Wow, that, that, that sounds terrific. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to check that out myself. And um, David, before I let you go, could you tell us uh, some upcoming projects uh, for yourself? Well, I, you know, I just I, I was on, on Broadway uh, this winter doing a show called Cost of Living. I uh, I am in another show, which I can't really talk about, uh, that's going to come out in the fall. And then I'm in the last season of The Blacklist, which should be coming out soon. Um, so yeah, that's that's what that's what's going on right now. Well, I'm... I'm the pretty... life of an actor, you got to, you know, you can't think two weeks in advance. You got to just keep it like anything can happen the following week, you know. Well, I'm I'm excited for all your projects, and I'm also excited for the fact that you, you still do theater. Usually, a lot of people who go into film and TV they 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 put theater behind. I like the balance uh, as, as an artist. You know, artistically, the balance is refreshing to me. You know, um, I always love theater. There's a unique experience in theater that you don't get anywhere else. That um, that kind of excites me and gives me energy and gives me hope. That is great. Well, David, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us about Snag. Thank Everyone's you. going to have to check out because this is this is a great popcorn flick. I will have to admit that. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank Bye. you.